Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Leaney. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal, and we are Talking with Docs. So please like, share, subscribe, spread the word. Spread the word. Free health information yes. at your fingertips. At your fingertips. Today, pretty, uh, pretty sweet topic. Ooh, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, we're gonna talk about something called glycemic index. GI. The GI, yeah, so in the news and on the internet and when you're looking for information, there's a lot of buzz about glycemic index mm -hmm. and what it means and what it does and why it's important. And people have really shifted away, I'd say, from fats and now sugars are really uh, the bell of the ball. They're getting a lot of attention right now. Sugars are the new enemy. Sugar, yeah. Frenemy, you the, might say. The new, yeah. Um, so, what is glycemic index? So, glycemic index is a measure mm -hmm. of essentially how much a specific carbohydrate load makes your blood sugar go up. Okay. So, right. like, why do we care about that? We care about that because we're learning more and more that sugar is related to things like inflammation, cardiovascular disease, and other bad things that can end your life early or make you miserable. You, you mean it's not just all about cholesterol? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not going there right now. No. So. The history of the glycemic index is just down the highway from us mm -hmm. at the University of Toronto. A guy named David Jenkins in 1981 was studying this tool to try to help diabetics be able to make healthier choices of food that didn't make their blood sugar spike so much. G.I. Jenkins. G.I. Jenkins. So this is actually, so 1981, so like 60 years earlier, a couple other guys in Canada discovered. Ooh, Banting and Best. Yeah, 1921 discovered insulin. Yeah, there's been a few greats. Banting and Best, Watson and Crick. Yeah. Zalzal and Weaning. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're not amongst those wow. greats. It's a pretty just, lofty company. It's just kidding. <laughs> That's not funny. We're like Laurel and Hardy. Laurel, yeah, maybe. Maybe Ernie and Bert. Okay, so the big thing about this is 1981. Right. We didn't know a ton about the bad things about sugar. Nope. There wasn't a lot of attention. It was mostly in people with diabetes where the interest was uh, with uh, sugar levels. but. That's sort of now spilling over into the general population as we learn more and more that sugar can't be bad for you. Yeah, and what's interesting is because in the 70s, that's when all those studies that said that fat was so bad, and mm -hmm. actually we've learned later on that actually was suppressed by the big sugar companies saying, listen, we need to get the focus off sugar, let's blame fat. And then that's what happened when we took all the fat out of food, we didn't low fat, but we filled it with sugar, and mm -hmm. it obviously, obviously caused lots of problems and didn't solve the weight problem that we have. Conspiracy. Theory. Conspiracy. So the way that it is measured is a 50 gram load of a specific carbohydrate. So this is only carbohydrates are then consumed, and then for two hours after that consumption, your blood glucose is measured, and then using a fancy what? What did we talk about before? The integral of the, the curve. The integral of the curve, or the area under the curve, tells you how sweet or how much that food makes your blood sugar go up. So Jenkins, you're a genius. Jenkins, Jenkins. Um, a glycemic index of 100 is the highest. So it's a zero scale, zero to 100. Mm -hmm. Glucose is given 100. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes they change it and they actually make white bread kind of the measure. Mm. And if white bread is 100, then they say glucose is 140. But it just goes to show that white bread really is sweet. We don't want to be white bread because we <laughs> set you as the example of how bad it can be and everything else is measured against you. That's right. Sorry, white bread. That's right. And what's interesting is that this has been designed to be a tool. So a lot of people say, well, there's some problems with the glycemic index. It's not a perfect tool and we would certainly acknowledge that and so would they and so would probably Jenkins. So for example, rice. So white rice has a glycemic index of 79. Wow. But whole grain rice has a glycemic index of 45. So even within a certain category of foods, the mm -hmm. way that the food is made mm -hmm. relates to the glycemic index. Or how long you let a, fr a fruit ripen. Right. Right. Riper fruits have a higher glycemic index than fruits that are not quite so ripe. It's like that black banana that you think has no purpose. But the bakers, they love the black banana because mm -hmm. it's just so naturally sweet. Banana bread. Banana bread. And then the third thing will be the way that you cook it. So mm -hmm. things that are steamed um, have a lower glycemic index, but if you cook it, really what happens is that food becomes so much more readily digestible mm -hmm. that your body is able to take it up a lot faster and then it makes your blood sugar. Spike. That's probably around the time the bamboo steamer made its fame. Do you remember that? I don't, I don't remember that. Infomercials on TV for the bamboo steamer. Back in 1981? If you remember the bamboo steamer, it was also the year that MTV was launched. It was uh, the year that Reagan got shot. Yep. And also the year that IBM launched the first uh, personal computer. So there's Jenkins battling MTV and a personal computer. He's like, he's like, hey, don't eat that. It's going to make your sugars go up. What was Jenkins wearing at the time? <laughs> Jordache jeans. And leg warmers. Leg warmers. Listening to Cyndi Lauper. He's like, I'm going to mess around with some of this sugar experiments here. 
Jenkins, you're a genius. You are. One of the other, just to mention, shortcomings though of the glycemic index is that it's not individual specific. So they usually took a group of at least 10 people to do this test to give it a number, but it varies between individuals. It varies within the same individual on a day-to-day -day basis. And it also is not necessarily totally appropriate for diabetics because sometimes their sugars are elevated for four hours or even beyond, not just two hours. But it is a useful tool. And I hate to tell you this, Jenkins, now we have continuous glucose monitors that you can purchase and they're commercially available. Yeah. You just slap it on your arm or your belly and you can use your phone and record yes. what your sugars are in real time. Essentially what that's doing is, especially if you're eating one food, that is assessing your glycemic index. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we do, we are working on a video where one of us wears one of these and uh, checks out what happens when your sugars go up, depending on what foods you eat. There you go. Now you know everything you need to know about glycemic index. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and your own blood sugars. Thanks to Jenkins. Thanks Jenkins. We'll see you next time.